Uh, it's a great day for NSU. It's a great day for NSU athletics, and it's a great day for all student athletes at NSU as well as the whole entire student body. Um, I've known Mr. Galloway for some time. Uh, back in my day at Arkansas many, many years ago, I was following him as a baseball coach then and, and uh, you know, was kind of in awe of some of the accomplishments he's had and some of the things he's done over the years. Uh, some of my colleagues and some of my friends – uh, we're very good friends of Mr. Galloway's that some folks we haven't talked about yet because I went through the vetting process just to see if I could dig up some more dirt on him. But uh, anyway, after talking with a lot of friends and a lot of folks, um, when I met Sonny, the first time I met Sonny, it's actually a funny story. I got to escort him out of a of a uh, of a ball field because he got ejected and and I was the guy that needed to lead him out of there. So we had a pretty good conversation that day. Uh, it. I, I knew I knew of Sonny's accolades. I knew what he's done and his accomplishments. But when I met Sonny, the reason that I decided that he was going to be the man for NSU and to lead the baseball program wasn't so much about his accolades and his accomplishments. And he's had many, 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 uh, a lot of great things he's done over the years and a lot of student athletes and baseball players and families he's affected in a positive way. Uh, it wasn't because of all the wins, uh, the championships, the things he's accomplished in his life in baseball as he's been through a lot of things. He's, he's a lot, of, a lot of ups, a lot of accomplishments, and he's had a lot of downs too, like many of us had in life, but he's a fighter. And when I met him in person, I knew he was a fighter and I was very abrupt with him on our situation at NSU. I wanted to be up front. I'm a man of tried to be a man, a few words, and it's probably not looking that way right now, but, uh, I looked at Mr. Galloway and I said, Hey, before you go any further, as he came on campus and wanted to visit, as he reached out to us, I said, I want to tell you a few things. I said, if this job becomes your job, you're going to come to a place where you're going to get less pay. You're going to have less scholarships. You're going to have less funding. You're going to have less internal and external support than you've ever had in your entire life. And you're going to have to do things on your own and you're going to have to work hard. And there's not going to be a lot of people standing behind you um, to do the things that you're going to need to be successful. And he looked right back at me and he said, that's the job I want because he wants to invest in student athletes lives. He wants to do great things and it's not about the money and it's about doing great things. And he already has done many, many great things, but I'll tell you the second thing that turned me that I knew that he was going to be my guy is we had some conversations back and forth via text message. And then uh, I got a text from him and he said, hey, I noticed you answer with 10-4. And so a lot of you probably don't know what that means, but that just means that's an old saying, an old CB term that says, I got it, I get it. And so a lot of my colleagues that I've worked with over the years, we all know what 10-4 means. It means we're really old because we understand what that means. And number two, it means that we probably spend more time working than we do talking. Because when you get these giant elaborate texts back from folks that you're trying to get information from and they send all this stuff that sometimes is not very meaningful, they usually spend more time talking and less time working. And when he answered back to me again and telling me he wanted to answer 10-4, I knew he was going to work. He's going to spend less time talking and more time working. So it's a proud day for us, proud day for NSU, proud day for this entire community to know that we've got somebody who has worked his entire life as hard as he can to achieve the things he's already achieved, but he has one less thing or one more thing that I know is on his plate that he wants to get done and he wants to do it here at NSU. So we're proud to have him here to do that. So welcome Sonny Galloway as our new head baseball coach. Well, first of all, um, thank you. Thank you for being here. Uh, I see some familiar faces in the crowd that uh, that I want to acknowledge at some point. But first, of course, uh, I'd like to thank uh, John Sizemore, our director of athletics here. Um, it, it's real simple for me. I've, I'm well-traveled. Uh, I think anybody could Google that and see I've been to a lot of different places, and I've been uh, blessed, and I'm ble ble blessed because of the people that I've been around. And uh, as John was speaking there and he talked about our relationship that we've developed in a short time, um, he spoke from his side of how he felt in his heart. I knew in my heart after meeting him and um, being offered the job and driving back and really spending a lot of time in thoughtful prayer 
that uh, it really does at the end of the day come down to who you're working with. And so for me getting started to be able to work with him, uh, man, a few words, man of getting after it. And we talked about the facilities and vision and things that I'd like to do. And that just comes with hard work, comes with raising money, comes with not just asking, but doing. And uh, he had a great answer. He said, well, just make room. I'll come, I'll come paint with you. I'll be right there next to you. And so um, that's the kind of person you want to be around. People want to be around people that'll help them uh, help themselves. And they're willing to come and, and work hard and help those people that uh, aren't afraid to get out there and do things. I also want to be sure and uh, thank our current president, uh, Steve Turner, uh, for this great opportunity and for leading this university, I believe, for at least the past decade. And uh, also to our incoming uh, Dr. Uh, Rodney Hanley. Look forward to working with him. Uh, know that he'll be starting here at the beginning of this month. And that's exciting uh, to have new leadership at the university and uh, and to work under that direction. Um the direction, of course, of our athletic director, John Sizemore, and our new president, uh, Dr. Rod, Rodney Hanley. So um, I want to go ahead and acknowledge my family, first and foremost, uh, my, my beautiful wife, Charlotte, who, of course, is not with us. She's in heaven. And, uh, you know, I know Charlotte has had her hand in this as much as John and I want to talk about our kindred uh, spirit and relationship. I know that my wife has her hand in everything that uh, has gone in our lives, uh, revolved around our children and uh, moving forward, continuing uh, to help guide me and guide our children every day. Uh, Charlotte was a very special, very special lady. And uh, there's some people here today that knew Charlotte and know of her. And so they know exactly what I'm talking about. But uh, she taught me a lot of things. And one of the things was a to spend and have bent knee over our children and knowing that our children, um, that their spouses were out there and we'd pray for their spouse. And just as God knows every star in the sky's name, he surely knows the name of our children's spouse. And uh, she was a tremendous leader. People always want to talk about Coach Galloway, Coach Galloway, Coach G, Coach G, Omaha, Team USA, National Championships, uh, youngest head coach, Division One head coach, all of those things. I I'm going to, I'm going to show you, I'm going to teach you young men that are here today. Those things don't matter. That's the past. And it's all about moving forward. And, and then there came a, a tremendous uh, important time in our life where it wasn't about coach G. It was about coach G's wife. It was about Charlotte and taking care of her uh, while she was stricken with pancreatic cancer. And so not a day goes by that I don't miss her. Not a day goes by that. I don't think up, uh, wake up thinking about her um, or that I don't uh, let her lead me. Uh, in what we do. And and I'm really tickled. Last night I was talking with my daughter, Taylor. Um, and I said, yeah, we're just going to do a real quick uh, introduction, uh, small press type thing. And she said, well, I, I want to come. I said, no, you got to work. You're in Oklahoma City. It's a long drive. You're not coming over. Dad, I'm not asking. I'm telling you. I said, Taylor, I don't want you on the highway that long, you know, two and a half hours both ways and young lady. And she said, but I want to be there. And I mean, how do you say no to that? So I want to introduce my daughter, Taylor, here, who is definitely her mother's child. And uh, she took the day off and, and works is very successful there in Oklahoma City. And I really appreciate her being here. And I know her and I know what she was thinking without even asking is uh, I've never been introduced in any job that I've ever accepted that I didn't have family there. And so I want to acknowledge her. I want to acknowledge uh, my other daughter, Sunny Kate, who's been texting me all morning and how excited she is. Uh, and my son-in-law, Jared, they live in Austin. My two grandkids are down there. And uh, hopefully we're going to be able to try to pull them back up here to Oklahoma. And so I think maybe Tahlequah, I think Lake Ten Killer, I think maybe Illinois River and Grand Lake can help pull them back up here. Um, but I'd like to have them much closer. And then, of course, my son, who played with a lot of the young men that are here today or against them, um, he is a tremendous young man. He wanted to be here today. He graduates from the Oklahoma City uh, Police Academy uh, on August 3rd. And so it's going to be a proud day uh, when we get to see him finally walk. He's been going through training, I believe, for six months, maybe six plus months right now and uh, getting to shoot guns and drive fast cars and things that are right up his alley. Right. But uh, a lot of prayer goes into the uh, the career that he's chosen. But as you see, I've first spoke about relationship between 
Coach Sizemore er, and myself uh, and his leadership. And I've talked about family, um, Charlotte, my children, my grandkids. Um, those things are always going to come first. They're going to trump wins and losses all day long. Uh, I've already had one player reach out and say, hey, coach, I'm going to miss on this day for a wedding. And I was like, absolutely. And I appreciate the respect of asking, um, you know, in such an advance and even before being assigned. But uh, that's a great sign of respect. But those are absolutes. There's important things in life that are always going to come first. And so as I reflected and Taylor always asked me, dad, what are you going to, what are you going to speak of? What are you going to speak of? She's learned by now that uh, I'm never at a loss for words, but I don't try to plan out anything. I always let uh, God lead me. And my prayer is real simple. And it's, you know, use me as a vehicle to guide these young men, guide this program, develop relationships, lifetime long relationships. And if you know anything about me, you know, that I've been getting some, calls and I've been getting a lot of texts and I've been getting a lot of social media from my former players. Uh, Chucky Caulfield's a guy I coached at the University of Oklahoma a long, long time ago, 2000, gosh, 13. Um, there's people that I coached. I know guys don't laugh, but uh, back in 1994, when we won the national championship, um, there's just a family of, of former players, of coaches, the coaching tree, Baseball can make the world a very, very small place. And so we're going to be relationship oriented. That's how we're going to build our chemistry. And then the talent that we recruit, the talent that's already here at Northeastern State University spoke volumes to me uh, across the diamond last year. And, uh, you know, I'm that guy that when I see things and, and I remember talking to an NSU player after the Friday game, I spoke to him Saturday during batting practice about some mechanics and pitching on the mound. People would have thought, are you crazy? You're the opponent's coach. And you're talking to him about things that you think will help him mechanically on the mound. And um, that's just how I am. I, I love baseball. I love the process. I love the development. And I love to invest in, in players. Um, I appreciate you young men. Uh, you young men that are here, you're what this is about. I always try to explain and and relay to peers that we wouldn't have a job if it wasn't for student athletes. So we're going to be student athlete driven, uh, take care of you, uh, ask you to do the right thing, remind you every day that people are watching, that you're a part of something much greater than yourself. Okay. But uh, if you do happen to get in trouble, let me know. Don't hide it. Let me know. I'll come get in with you and we'll figure it out because that's the best policy. Um there's some parents of some players that I've known for a long time here. Uh, of course, Coach Havens being here, I uh, appreciate him. I know that our mayor is sitting here. I had the pleasure of riding around with Suzanne for a day, and uh, she was giving me all the ins and outs about Tahlequah. So that'll be our secret, though. But a familiar face and a familiar relationship already that I really appreciate. And uh, at the end, uh, I'll sum this up by saying – um, I'll teach young men. You can't connect your dots going forward. We have young men I've visited with already that aspire to play professionally. Um, we have former players from NSU that are playing professional baseball. There's no reason why you can't pursue that dream going through Tahlequah Northeastern State University. And we'll prove that through our hard work, our development, recru recruiting skill, quality character athletes. Um, I don't want them to give up on the dream. It doesn't, the division one, division two, and this is coming from somebody that has a tremendous amount of history with it. That's irrelevant. I mean, if they're drafting guys with the third pick in the country this year at a high school, that guy's not seeing the kind of competition on the mound. Or if you're a pitcher, seeing the kind of competition in the batter's box that you'll see at the division two. So don't tell me that you can't get drafted, that they can't evaluate you fairly um, at a division two level. Uh, I don't believe that for a minute and, uh, and we're going to go out and we're going to prove that each and every day. But what that comes with is understanding the process, hard work, determination, and the last thing's mental toughness. Most important thing about our game, you can look it up right now, major league baseball. How many guys are hitting over 300? Not very many, not very many. I mean, there are so many guys that are failing two thirds of the time failing two thirds of the time or more. And they come back to the yard. They have a great attitude. They understand the approach. 
they understand that hitting is not a destination. Hitting is a journey. And that's my job is to teach young men how to accept that journey, the pitfalls, the highs, and keep it even kill as we go through that. If we don't enjoy the journey along the way, we pretty much miss the boat. And so, yeah, we're going to pursue championships. That's why I made the change. I'll be honest with you. Um, but more importantly, we're going to invest in our student athletes. We're going to understand the process. We're going to work hard and we're going to make it about you young men. Uh, I believe that, uh, John said it wasn't about the money. Trust me on that. Um, it's not about a bigger budget and it's not about going to work and not having to work as hard. Probably got to work a lot harder, but I know that I've got young men here that we've recruited. Uh, we'll continue to recruit some kids that have decided to come over some kids that are already here. I know those guys. I know the character. I've heard great stories about it. They'll invest in the program. They'll move forward with me. And, uh, I believe NSU baseball has got some great, great days ahead of it. So I'm humbled by this opportunity. Uh, I'm blessed by this opportunity and really can't wait to get started. Thank you for coming today.